Hey, students and parents, thanks so much for tuning in and for taking the time to watch this video. And so the question that we have today is, can I still be a Christian and disagree with what the Bible says on LGBTQ issues? I think what would be helpful is to kind of get behind the question, I should say, or the heart of the question. And here's what the question seems to be indicating. It's somebody who's saying, I'm a Christian and I'm following God and I'm following Jesus. But on the other hand, um, I have a problem. I, there's a conflict. I am struggling to believe something that the Bible says is true. I'm struggling to believe an aspect about God or his character. And I think this kind of tension um, does happen regularly, I would say, in different seasons of life in the Christian life. As we get to know God more and we read his word more, that conflict does come up. And I think that there are two ways to handle this conflict. I think there's a healthy way and an unhealthy way. So let's talk about the healthy way first. I think the healthy way to handle when we have tension and conflict in our heart, we're struggling to believe an aspect about God or struggling to even believe that a certain thing the Bible teaches is true would be to go to God and to honestly tell him and to honestly ask for his help and, and to give it to God. I think we see a great example of that in scripture, but especially in the Psalms, which the Psalms are like kind of reading a diary uh, for the people who wrote the Psalms. David wrote many of the Psalms and he certainly struggled at times. You kind of see this, this tension. And one of the Psalms, I was just reading Psalm 13, you see this exactly where he's like, how long, O Lord, will you forget, forget me? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I take counsel in my own soul and have sorrow in my heart? How long? You know, David essentially saying, God, I'm struggling here. My circumstances and what I'm seeing around me and the evidence around me seems to be indicating that there's something about you that's not true. I'm struggling to believe in your goodness and your care for me. Um, so I think having these tensions and these moments and these seasons where we go through hard times or we're just really in, in a season where we're struggling to believe a certain truth about God those things, I think, do happen. And we can come to God and be honest with him. And at the end of this psalm, I love what David says. He he does express those attitudes to God, but then he says, but I've trusted in your steadfast love. My heart, my heart will rejoice in your salvation. So then the day, that healthy way to handle these tensions and conflicts in our heart is, is to admit those things to God, but then have an attitude that says, God, you're still God. And at the end of the day, I still trust you. Now, the unhealthy way, I think, would be kind of take the different approach, would, which would be you can communicate to God and say, God, yeah, I'm having a hard time believing what your word says about a particular issue. And in this example for this question about what your the, your word says about LGBTQ issues. And so, God, um, I'm just going to reject what you say. And I'm going to choose to believe what I actually think is right. So I, I think that that's an unhealthy way. And I think that is, is troubling to hear. I don't even like to say it because that doesn't seem to reflect uh, an attitude that what we would want, what a genuine Christ follower would really want to say to God. Think back to Romans 10, 9, when, when we become Christians and we make this commitment, we, we trust Jesus in faith, through faith. Romans 10, 9 says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. And so you can kind of see it. It starts with that confession that Jesus is Lord, that he is God. And that's an attitude. Now, we're not going to be perfect. And, and there are certainly times where the way we live and the way that we talk is not going to reflect that. But as, as a general principle, we should have that attitude in our hearts. Jesus, you're Lord, you're God, and I'm not. And so we'd want to kind of have that attitude where we say, God, I'm struggling, but at the end of the day, I'm still going to trust that you're God. And the last thing I'm going to say is if, if you are someone who does struggle with what the Bible is saying about LGBTQ issues, and let me just three, three quick things to encourage you with. Um, one, start with what you do agree with what the Bible says. And I think you, some good starting places is like Genesis 1, that God has created us all in his image. Psalm 139, 13 and 14, that we are, every single person is fearfully and wonderfully made. And start with 
what you do agree with, what the Bible says. Romans 5, 8, that God demonstrated his love for us and that when we're all sinners, we all are sinners, every single one, but God died for us. So start with what you do believe about what the Bible says and, and what the Bible says about the LGBT community. We know those things are true. And then from there, surround yourself with Christian community, small groups, friends uh, in your church that you can walk through this question with and ask them, help me kind of, help me. Um, I, I'm wondering about this. I'm wondering about this. How do you see this issue? And surround yourself with great like-minded believers who can help walk you through this issue. And the last thing I'll say is to start praying for God to help you give you specific insight and to see his perspective, to see why he's prescribing this certain aspect in our lives or a certain way that we should live. And admit it just like uh, David does. Be honest and cling to God's goodness and trust that at the end of the day, what God cares most about is our eternal joy. God wants our eternal joy. And there are some things that may not align in our own lives and we may have to sacrifice some things, but it's always going to be for our benefit as we live within the boundaries God has placed in our lives. Hopefully that's helpful. Thank you so much for tuning in.